everyone, welcome to this week's Doggo Box. My name is Tammy and I am the Chief Desk at Clan Canines. Um, just while we wait on people to, to jump on, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my day today. I hope you all had good ones. Um, today was the Curly Crusade. So for those of you who don't know what that is, um, it's a new service that I launched just a couple of weeks ago. It's on every Monday afternoon and it's designed specifically for doodle breeds. So for cavapoos, cockapoos, labradoodles, golden doodles, um, poodles as well. So, so any kind of oodle. Um, and we go out for an hour and a half's adventure and we play loads of brain games and we teach them tricks um, and we play with some fab toys like flirt poles and babble balls and generally we have we have a really really great time um, so if you're interested if you've got a doodle and you're interested in finding out how to apply to become part of the curly clan then do after this live give me a shout um, and you can actually scroll down the page don't do it just now wait till the, wait till the post's over um, but you can scroll down the page and there's some reviews there from some of the owners some of the human clan members um, so hi guys, uh, Scott and Claire and Tam are all here and Shirley is as well. Oh and so is Lindsay, hi Lindsay, she's the mum of one of my little curlies that was out today. Um, so today the reason that we're on um, is to interview um, a fantastic dog stylist called Karen Hill. Um, Karen runs the, the dog house down in Bakewell. So we're going to be talking a lot about grooming and um, some basic general stuff like um, you know how often it should be done and how to make it more enjoyable for your dog and then we're really going to get down into actual doodle breeds and talk a lot in detail about about doodle breeds and grooming because they do have um, probably more more maintenance needs than than a lot of breeds when it comes to grooming so what I'm going to do um, is try and bring Karen on so just bear with me hi Lisa hi Daisy I hope you're not sleeping today Daisy was sleeping through my live post last week so Karen's there. I'm just going to try bring her on. This will work. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this is always the nervous part. Hi, hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Are you? I'm good. I'm good. Hopefully, everyone can um, hear us as well. So, Karen, do you want to just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and about your business? Yeah, so, um, I mean, you have sort of introduced me, but um, I do own Doghouse in Bakewell. Uh, we've been running for about four years now. Um, and mainly I got into grooming because I have three massive dogs that unfortunately do take a lot of grooming. Um, I had a bad experience with a groomer that I took my own to. So I just sort of thought, do you know what, I'm going to learn to do this myself. And I did. And it took off from there, really. Fantastic. So, so tell us then, why, um, why is it important that people should get their dogs groomed? Like, what, why, is, why do they need to do it? Um, so, if you take your dog to a groomer, for example, what we usually do is like a health check sort of thing first. Um, so, this will pick up any skin irritations, we'll check their eyes, their ears, their teeth, um, it, it will show up things like ticks and fleas, for example. So it's just a good way of, you know, keeping a check on your dog's health. Um, if you're grooming at home, it's a really good bonding experience. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's a good thing, especially with the doodle breeds now. You know, it's such a massive thing. And, yeah. you know, the lifestyle of the dogs, it can become quite uncomfortable if they start to get matted and things like that and cause a lot of problems down the line. So that's why we recommend you keep on a really good grooming schedule yeah no definitely well we will come back to the doodles because we're, we're we're definitely going to cover that in, in quite a lot of detail i know i can already see quite a few doodle owners on here um so I, i'm sure they're going to have lots of questions for you um so i know it's different maybe breed to breed but how often should people be, be getting their dogs groomed would you say okay so we usually say every sort of six to nine weeks um that you know it does depend on the breed it depends on the dog's lifestyle so if you've got a really active dog that's going swimming in rivers going through woods things like that you know they really need to be kept on a, a tight grooming schedule if you've got something like a labrador you know you can perhaps ease that out a little bit but all dogs you know they'll molt so yeah, we usually say sort of six to nine weeks is a good average. 
Mm-hmm. And how, so um, I know people sort of get puppies and um, they're sort of obviously thinking about taking them to be groomed for the first time. How how can you make that, like, how can the owner help to make that more enjoyable for the dog? Um, and, and I guess what can you do as a groomer as well? What do you do to make the dogs feel more comfortable? Okay, so I think the most important thing is to get your dog used to a groomer at a really young age. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as they've had all their puppy injections and that, the next visit really needs to be to a groomer's. Um, a lot of groomers will offer like a puppy package so they can come in, just have a bath, dry. Um, but it just gets them used to the noises and the groomers and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, just you can be getting your dog used to grooming at home as well. So getting them used to having the feet touched, the face touched, um, just that sort of thing. Yeah. Perfect. I think you've you've actually almost answered Karen's question there before she asked it. But Karen was just asking you how can you prepare <laughs> for grooming. So like you were saying at home sort of doing that work with them and getting them used to be touched is there anything else that people could do or is that pretty much the best sort of start uh, yeah i mean especially with the doodle breeds you know grooming them at a young age because as their puppy coat starts to fall out that's when it will mat so brushing them at home is is a must and it will get them used to having their bodies touched and that sort of thing and Just, you know, getting them used to the noise of dryers. So you can be doing that at home, um, just using your hairdryer around them. Mm -hmm. Just getting them used to all them noises that can be a bit intimidating if they go into a a grooming salad. So it is a good good way to start at home. No, definitely. Um, (coughs) So... In terms of in between grooms, um, is there is there things that people can do at home to to help? You know, especially if it's maybe a breed that does need more regular grooming, like a doodle or or a dog that's really active and outdoors all the time. Is there something the owners can be doing to to keep on top of it? Yeah, I mean, brushing at home that's a must, especially if you do own a doodle breed, especially like say as their puppy coat is growing out. Um, Bathing, you know, it's important to keep a clean coat, especially on them breeds. And we advise against towel drying, especially with like the doodle breeds, because rubbing a coat will just mat it. So, you know, give it by all means, give them a bath, use something that's quite um, well conditioning because of their coats. And then just try and let them sort of air dry uh, and just brush them through afterwards. That's that's sort of the best maintenance at home. Um, But definitely, you know, keeping an eye on things like the hair growing into their eyes, their ears, because doodle breeds are prone for the hair growing down into the ear canal. So you need to really be keeping an eye on that. A lot of groomers can pluck the hair out of the ear canals or, you know, you might have to take them to a vet if it becomes infected, that sort of thing. But there's a lot you can do at home, but it's just really important to keep on top of the coat by brushing it and, you know, I mean, I've got some some brushes and stuff to show you, especially for the doodle breeds. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to ask, like, because you see so many different styles of of brushes. What what is the best sort of one for for doodles? Okay. Just... <clears throat> so, um, I mean, this is a slicker brush that you can get from all pet shops. A lot of groomers might sell them. Um, this is ideal for like a doodle coat. It is quite sharp, so you have to be careful you know, not to be scratching their skin. And you need to make sure that you're parting the hair and really brushing from the skin. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a good way to start. But this is a poodle comb. So it's like narrower (laughs) narrower (laughs) at one end than it is the other. Um, It's really important that you can get this through your dog's coat before taking them to a groomer's. Because unfortunately, if you can't get a comb through, Uh it's very unlikely that we can then get... A clipper attachment through so if you're wanting to keep your dog longer and fluffier you really need to be combing it <laughs> that that's brilliant and that that big comb there is that something that you can generally buy in most pet stores as well yeah yeah you should be able to get it from a pet store or you can get them online i mean any sort of comb will do but that is just you know it's designed for the poodley breeds but just if you can run a comb through it then that's a, an amazing start because unfortunately a groomer's only got a short amount of time to groom your dog. Uh-huh. If we can't get a comb through it, then we're really going to struggle getting anything else through it. Basically. I can imagine sometimes you must, you must see some, um, some sites. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I'm just going to go back because there's been a few questions asked. So just bear with me. Jennifer Beatty is saying, my Springer Spaniel's coat, I think that's supposed to say, is very bizarre. It's almost wispy. Is there a spray or anything that she can do to tame it, would you say? Um, you can get like, <clears throat> you can get a conditioning spray, um, like a leave-in conditioner if it's, you know, if it is going a bit frizzy and stuff like that. But, eh. I mean, this is like a simple shed spray. So this is like, it's got static control in it and stuff like that. So that might help. Um, but just, you know, it's probably that it's wispy because there's a lot of undercoat in there that's ready to fall out. So just a really good brush and then a conditioning spray should help just calm that down a little bit. Perfect. And again, Karen, she's answering all your questions before we even get to that. Because Karen's next question was, can you put leave-in conditioner in? Which you've already said you can. Is there any particular brands that you think are, are good that people can buy, you know, to use at yeah. home? I mean, there's lots of leave-in conditioner sprays mm -hmm. that you will get from pet shops and things yeah. like that. Um, I mean, we use like Esprit, which I mean, I can put like, a link onto their website at the end and stuff like that. But like I say, you will go into your local pets at home or pet shop or something like that, and they'll have a massive range of things like that. So you'll you'll find something, especially the leave-in conditioners are the better ones. Fantastic. So Lisa, who's one of my clan, she's saying her dog used to love the groomers, um, but she's had leg operations and now hates the groomers. Um, she can touch her legs at home and she lets um, Lisa bath her, brush her and blow dry her. But, sorry, this is a long one. But as soon as she goes to the groomer, she shakes and growls when we touch her body. Any tips at all to help with that, would you say? Um, I think that's just, you know, she's obviously had a bad experience with, you know, having a leg her operation on it. She's probably sensitive around that area. I think it would just be a case of you need to speak to your groomer, you know, make them aware that that, that is going to be a problem area. And just... The groomer will perhaps go a bit slow around that area or give you some tips on how to manage that at home so that the groomer can sort of work around that area. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah that's good. It's just, you know, it's getting the dog used to having that area touched again, unfortunately. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but no, I think that's really good advice if there's stuff that Lisa can be doing at home so that the groomer doesn't have to do as much on the legs, that's good. Um, Becky is asking, Becky Clark, do you recommend any detangling sprays or is it not a good idea um a detangling spray in a doodle coat yeah absolutely it will help you know it'll help get the brushes through um especially if you're combing it out i mean i wouldn't absolutely paste your dog in it because it will leave quite a greasy finish um but yeah it will help brush you know brushing them through it, it's a bit like if you're using it in your own hair you know especially with children it just helps with the brushing <laughs> Perfect. So, um, so like, let's talk doodles. Then. <laughs> why, like, why is it so important to to really keep on top of their coats? Like, what what's the what happens if you don't? Okay, so um, I mean, like I said before, especially with the puppy stages, because doodles are designed not to molt. However, as they're losing their puppy coat, that is going to come out. It's got to come out. So, yeah. if that's not being brushed out while it's coming out unfortunately it'll tangle up and mat with the adult coat so it's really important as they're you know growing into adult adulthood um so it could that could be up to two years old that you're really maintaining that and and keeping that in good condition um but they are just it's like with a poodle coat depending on you can get the more wiry breeds or you can get the really tight curled breeds the wiry breeds not so much um, they won't mat as badly as the really tight curls. Uh -huh. So if you have a doodle that's, you know, really tight curls, um, that's the sort that you need to be brushing daily. Um, but they are, you know, again, it depends on their lifestyle. If you do have one that's in the water all the time or running around fields, getting twigs stuck in their coats, it, it's how you have to sort of work around that. You might find that keeping that dog shorter helps because you know once a coat becomes matted unfortunately it can tear the skin it can cause skin irritations so i mean we've seen a lot that have to be taken really short and 
as you are taking that coat off, it's like a whole layer of dirt is trapped underneath it. So that is going to cause a lot of skin irritations and yeah. that sort of thing. So it is really important to get that checked and, and dealt with, basically. And really unpleasant for the dog then to be in to be in that situation. Um, I was actually when you were saying that there, I was thinking, yeah, all the all the doodles in my clan, I think, <laughs> all have to be kept quite short because I have them at the beach and in the woods and everything all the time. Bless them, poor, poor owners. Um, Claire is saying um, doodles can be quite a lively and bouncy breed. Definitely true. Um, have you got any tips for keeping them still when you're trying to handle them? Um, again, I think that's almost a training question. And, I, you know, we use a lot of treats, a lot of encouragement, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, we don't like to sort of tether any dog up because it, it causes a lot of stress and stuff. But just, again, getting them used to being groomed at home, um, use a lot of treats as rewards, mm -hmm. getting them used to being touched in certain areas that they, they might not like or, you know, they might be quite sensitive around. But usually when you take your dog to a groomer's, they they are different to being groomed at home. They usually just sort of go, oh, okay, you know, I'm being groomed now and they will stand. But um, especially at that puppy stage when they're really nosy and want to know what's going off all the time, just the more they get groomed, the more they'll get used to it. And it does just become part of their routine. And, you know, they'll come in, jump on the table, stand there thinking, well, if I'm well behaved, this is going to be over with a lot quicker. So <laughs> it's, just, it's just routine, really. Yeah, perfect. Um, Becky is asking, I, I don't know if she's talking about doodles specifically here, but I'm going to presume that she is. Um, do you recommend them getting cut shorter for the summer months? Um, yes. I mean, again, it depends. It's, it will help a little bit to keep them cooler, but it is more in the winter, for example, when they're going to be out and it's raining and, you know, oh, they're getting muddy and stuff that's usually when we have to take a lot of ours shorter just because it's so high maintenance when you know because they're coming in with muddy legs and stuff so people are just rinsing them down and, and rubbing them with towels and that's when they start to mat so in summer when they're slightly drier unless they are in the river all the time mm -hmm. their coats can be a lot more easy to maintain okay. um but yeah i mean if you see that your dog's really struggling in, in the heat then taking it slightly shorter will help um also maybe just having their tummies shaved, um, especially in between their pads, because um, doodle coats will mat in between their paws, which can be really, really painful. Um, so ha having all that shaved out will keep them cooler and a lot comfortable as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, just I think, Jennifer, I, I think we've maybe answered that question earlier, Jennifer, but I'll just check if there's anything you want to add to it. Jen's just asking, um, she gets her labradoodle groomed regularly, any advice for maintenance in between? Obviously, we've talked about brushing and what have you. I mean, anything else to add to that? or? Um, just, again, you know, combing them through, making sure there's no knots in there, no mats, um, keeping an eye on their eyes, ears, uh, the nails especially. I mean, if you keep your dog to a, a sort of six to nine week routine, um, the groomers will trim the nails, that sort of thing. So it will keep on top of all of that. But just, yeah, just keeping an eye on them at home. Um, like I say, not towel drying too much. If they, if you are going to bath them, just make sure you're sort of letting them air dry uh, or hair dry them. Um, but brushing them through as they're drying sort of thing will really help because the coat just tightens as it dries. So if it's tightening as you're rubbing in it, it will just mat. Yeah. No, that's that's really good advice, I think. And I think a lot of people don't don't know that. They, they would automatically just think to towel dry the dog. So that, like, obviously, as we do with our own hair. So that's brilliant. Um, I guess I was actually thinking, um, obviously, you're probably best to find the groomer that you, you know, that you, you really like and stick with them because then your dog can build the relationship with them. But if you are going to a new groomer, um, from a groomer's point of view, like, how important is it, is it that people are like really honest with you and you know like if their dog is quite jumpy or anything like that does that make a big difference yeah absolutely I mean honesty is vital really because if you take a dog into the groomers and say oh yeah you know my dog's brilliant and unfortunately we put it on the table and it's trying to bite your face off or you know things like that it, it just a lot of groomers will say no sorry you know, you have to sort of realize the risks involved because if you've got a snappy dog or something like that, 
you have to let your groomer know so it can be muzzled correctly and stuff like that. Because it is all a safety thing for the groomer and the dog. Mm -hmm. um, if a dog snaps at a pair of scissors as you're grooming around the face, you know, it can end up in a bit yeah. of a bloody situation yeah. or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really important to be honest, especially with nervous dogs, young dogs, that sort of thing. If, if you know there's a part of their body they don't like being touched, then let us know and, you know, we'll either pay more attention to that area to get them used to it or avoid it at all costs if it's yeah. going to be a really, issue, really big issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, honesty is really important in, in any profession. You know, if, if you were a dog trainer and somebody said that your dog's brilliant and you walked in the house and it bit them, you know, it's, you've got to be honest at the end of the day. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Tom Clark is asking, um, is there a special nail varnish for dogs if you like your, if you like your dog to be, um, I don't know what the word is. <laughs> There is, there is special nail varnish for dogs. Um, we have a lovely pink colour here nice. uh, that unfortunately hasn't really taken off, but my poodle does parade that around quite often. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, there is. <laughs> is it quite easy for people to do it at home? Like, obviously, if their dogs get to stay still long enough. Um... Yeah, if you can paint your own nails, you can paint your dog's nails. Um, um... It obviously does depend if they will keep still and and they like having their feet held for quite a long time and also get a very quick drying one because otherwise as soon as they run off it ends up on your carpet and everywhere i can imagine <laughs> it just feels like a disaster waiting to happen can, can you buy that can you buy nail varnish at pets at home yeah or like that uh, or... maybe not i don't know with pets at home i mean i know we can get it through suppliers and stuff like that. And I'm sure if somebody really wanted a special colour, your groomer could get you one. Um, oh, but yeah, it will be available somewhere on the internet, I'm sure. Oh, fantastic. Um, so guys, if you've got any other questions, type them up quickly um, just now, because we're going to be finishing off soon. But in the meanwhile, Karen, have you got any other advice, um, whether it's doodle specific or just in general with grooming, any tips or? Yeah, I mean, um, especially, Recently with the weather getting so warm and stuff like that, we have seen a lot of ticks and fleas and things like that. So it's really important that you're checking your dog after you've been out on a walk, especially for ticks, because they can become a massive problem if left. Um, if you do see one, then obviously I would take them to your vet. But if you're nowhere near a vet or something like that, you can nip them into your groomers. They can either take them out for you or give you some advice on how to get rid of them. Um, I mean, fox poo was one of the other things that was was mentioned oh, before. Yes. Uh -huh. I have a dog that loves rolling in fox poo. There is products you can get, especially designed for that. A lot of animalology products you can get, even just get some wipes that are supposed to help get rid of that. Um, uh -huh. And there is a rumor that tomato sauce works, but I've never tried that. So <laughs> I've heard that <laughs> as well. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know how the owners would feel if they came home and their dogs like covered tomato sauce. Red. <laughs> Fox or tomatoes. but yeah so do you think like you know and I, i've seen that animology i've seen their fox their fox poo one do, do you think anything really works properly or is it like a proper groomer job to to get the smell out because they do stick <laughs> don't they like but the beagles yeah. out particularly like to 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 roll in the fox poo <laughs> I mean, to be honest, um, if your dog has rolled in fox poo when you take them to a groomer, they are going to use something along the lines of that fox poo shampoo. Yeah. Because normal shampoo will just not shift it. So, yeah. you know, if you can buy it at home, then by all means use it at home. Um, it will save you a bit of money getting them yeah. taking your dog just be bathed yeah. because it smells. Uh -huh. Um but yeah, I mean, I would try them. Like I say, there'll be that many products out there. It's going to be a bit of trial and error. Uh -huh. But, I mean, even try the tomato sauce if you're desperate, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. Has anyone here, like, tried it? Anyone watching? Has anyone ever tried the tomato sauce? I'm really keen to know if it works or not. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that's great. Um, what's Becky saying? Oh, hot dogs covered in ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, cool. So I don't know if anyone else is. Oh, oh Karen's asking. I was just about to say, no one's got any more questions. Um, can you overwash a dog? Um, yes, you can overwash a dog. I mean, uh, like I said, with our guidelines, it's every six to nine weeks, sort of thing. I wouldn't recommend bathing your dog every week consistently. 
unless you're using like a, a medicated shampoo. If your dog has a skin issue and it needs washing every week, then by all means, wash your dog every, every week. But as long as you're using quite a moisturizing shampoo, like say a, a good conditioner, that sort of thing, you're not going to do too much damage by, by bathing it at the end of the day. It's, I mean, if your dog's going into a river and that sort of thing, bathing it will actually help get rid of all that, you know, bacteria and stuff it's picked up in there. So bathing it, I think you could probably do more good than harm if you if you know what I'm saying. That's good because I was just thinking there's some of some of my wee clan, um, especially in the winter, ev every single day they're <laughs> like the receivers and the Springer Spaniels. They like to just get get dirty every every time. Um, Jennifer is saying that she has used ketchup before. Did it work, Jennifer? Uh, it worked a treat. Um, <laughs> oh my God. She got sprayed by a skunk when she lived in the USA and ketchup was the only thing that got rid. Cool. So yeah, guys, definitely try the try the tomato sauce. <laughs> oh, anything else from, from you, Karen, at all? Any other tips or um no, I think just like I say, you know, keeping your dogs in a good routine, it's gonna help keep them calm. It'll become less stressful for them, introducing them when they're really young. Um, and just really grooming at home is a massive thing, just especially with the doodle coats, making sure that, you know, you really are taking that time at home. It's a really good bond ex bonding experience yeah. for you dog as well. So they'll enjoy it. It's a bit of fuss, but you're going to save your groomers some heartache when you take them in, if, <laughs> unless they're really mad. <laughs> No, definitely. I think as well, if you're just like sitting watching telly and they're chilling out, you know, I think it, could, it can be really relaxing for them. So it's, um, yeah, that's really, really good advice. Um, well, thank you very much, Karen. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, guys, please hit some likes and loves for Karen um, for giving up some time to give you all advice. Um, and just before everyone leaves, next week, um, next Monday, I have Hazel Burton coming on to do a special live interview and she runs um, East Lothian Clinical Canine Massage Centre. And so she is a clinical canine masseuse. And uh, that's going to be a really interesting one. So do all come back next Monday at half seven for that. Um, we're getting lots of loves for you there, Karen. That's, that's really nice. And thank you very, very much. Um, and we will see you again soon. Thanks. See you Bye. later. <laughs> Bye.